Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm pretty good, Brian. I guess I'm recovering from that stunning Kentucky Derby finish. You were not the only person stunned by that result, Matt. You know, the, the Kentucky Derby, the official shirts for the Kentucky Derby didn't even have Rich Strike on them. Number 21, also eligible list. He didn't get into the Kentucky Derby until minutes before the deadline Friday morning. Lucas scratches Ethereal Road. And what do you know? Rich Strike gets in at that late, late minute. I won't say hour, late hour. And uh, sure enough, the 21, Rich Strike wins the Kentucky Derby. One of the wildest uh, results we could have imagined. There he is, uh, a fairy tale story, Rich Strike. We're going to jump right into what it means for the Preakness. Matt, are you thinking Triple Crown with this son of Keen Ice? Oh, no, I don't think so, Brian. Uh, you know, historically, the these big long shots that have won the Derby, um, a number of them have come back and, and they've, they've come back and run pretty well. But, you know, when you're talking about uh, derby winners that have been like over 30 to one. It's it's only charismatic that came back and won the Preakness. Of course, Country House a couple of years ago didn't run again. Mind that bird uh, at 50 to one, finished second. Giacomo at 50 to one ish also finished second. Um, I guess anything's possible, but no, I, I, I'm not really thinking Triple Crown. Now, and you see our Preakness, uh, our early Preakness possibles up there. Rich Strike all the way down at the fifth choice, about eight to one. Uh, I will mention Cannonero from years and years ago, Matt, uh, a long time ago. And he would have, he would have, if he wasn't part of the field, he would have been uh, 80 to one or more in that Kentucky Derby uh, almost 40 years ago. And of course, he came back and did well as well. But you're right. Uh, mind that bird. Ran a, ran, ran a really good race, but Rich Strike, again, will be somewhat ignored. Nothing like his 80 to 1 there in the Kentucky Derby and that thrilling victory. Of course, I think Pace made the race, and I, uh, I, I ha I'm I a cautionary tale uh, as far as this race because it was the most frustrating betting experience of my lifetime by a long way. I bet all the rallyers in the race. I thought the pace would be hot, and I bet the race to come back. I used Rich Strike on all my tickets. But I guess I was going for something a little bit too big, and I didn't connect. Shame on me. But Pace, Pace, Matt Schiffman, Pace made this race 100%. They went too fast early, and it set it up for a horse who was coming from way back but also could get the trip kind of, as we've seen with a lot of ralliers that have won the Derby, kind of coming through and kind of getting through on the inside. Yeah, and and that's the Pace certainly did uh, uh, uh affect the race the 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 jockeys and connections that decided that they were going to try and run with summer is tomorrow certainly paid the price brian and were nowhere to be seen uh most noteworthy in that bunch was uh was messier who tried to stay close too close to summer is tomorrow who to me looked like a horse yeah okay he was going to go out and set a pace, but there was very little chance that he was going to be around at the end of the race. At the end of the race, and the other the other jockeys who made the decision to sit off a little bit um, were the ones that were there, like with Epicenter um, and Zandon and Simplification. Uh, you know, they sat off a little farther uh, back than certainly in in. Their derby prep races, but there they were, down the stretch, you know, way down the stretch, a sixteenth of a mile or less than a sixteenth of a mile uh, on top. Yeah, uh, let's get back to that Preakness list. I, I thought Epicenter, of course, ran a big race, and he will be a clear favorite in this Preakness, Matt. Epicenter, uh, yeah, he sat a little farther back than he has before. I'll agree with you on that one. But on the other hand, he wasn't far off that pace. And the seven horses that were ahead of him early, he was an eighth early, but he was uh, he was only four or five lengths back. The seven horses that were uh, listed ahead of him early all, all backed out pretty badly. Uh, uh, Crown Pride being another one, Messier. It's hard to let a horse go in the Kentucky Derby, but you're, you're kind of right. I think that's what they needed to do. 
yeah. with summer is tomorrow. But when there are so many other horses that want to be near the lead, we talked about this, it's hard to say, okay, I'm going to sit five, six lengths off that speed. There's just, it, it's a cavalry charge and it's a cavalry charge that chased a pace that was way too fast. Enter Rich Strike, enter Sonny Leon, enter trainer Eric Reed. He got the trip, masterful ride by Sonny Leon in his first Kentucky Derby. Up the center deserves to be the favorite. We have him at two to one here, Matt, and that's dependent a little bit on the second horse on the list because Zandon, I think, will be the second choice if he runs. We're still waiting to find out if Zandon makes this race or not. Chad Brown, okay, once again, is being a little coy in his decision, waiting to say if Zandon will run in the Preakness or not. Yeah, I think they're going to give him a little bit more of a serious workout uh, this weekend, and then Chad's going to make his decision. Yeah, and if that decision is dependent on the workout, I, I think there is a good chance that Zandon will be in the race. They're talking about the Travers as a serious uh, goal for Zandon, but uh, hey, we got this Preakness coming up in, in a week and a half now, Matt, and Zandon ran a very good race. He did get bothered a little bit at the start. Jockey Flavian Pratt, uh, though, got him forward, got him in a forward position. People were worried that he'd be too far out. Maybe he was too close because he was right there in the middle of the pack early and not all of that far off that crazy pace so maybe it turned out that zandon was closer than he needed to be and zandon ran a very good race but i think epicenter you could easily say epicenter is the, the one horse maybe deserving of this win more than any other other than the winner rich strike because epicenter uh went chased early uh he went after the lead on the turn long before zandon and long before of course the winner and Epicenter held very well. At, at one point during the stretch, Matt, I thought Zandon was going to go by Epicenter, and it just never happened. Yeah, and and I, I can't criticize anything about what uh, uh, Epicenter did uh, in the race. He, uh, when when you saw that he was turning back Zandon, he sure did look like a winner. Um, you know, I was rooting for him. I needed him. I had the the second, third, and fourth place finishers were were my trifecta with the, the big price simplification in there that we talked about in our uh, wagers. So uh, I was looking good uh, in there, but I remember right after the race started watching it live, of course, and seeing a horse and with everything going on, you don't exactly know who, who it was, but seeing a horse dart from the outside behind the field all the way over to get to the rail. And I was saying to myself, who the heck is that? Yeah, and that's worked before, Matt. That, that We've seen that in the Derby uh, time after time now where an outside rallier will just break to the rail. They, they don't need to be ahead of horses. And Sonny Le Leon kept him interested for, for a while there uh, where he wasn't dead last and uh, he was ready to roll. This is a horse who really hard to like, but on the other hand, he was improving. He did have a nice win over the track last year albeit a maiden claiming, but he won by 17 lengths in fast time. And he looked really good in the morning, spread for 10 furlongs. There you go. Rich strike, the winner. Now, next on our list after Epicenter and possibly Zandon in the Preakness is Secret Oath. And I, I think there's a question who will be the third choice, but I think people might be attracted to that Kentucky Oaks winner. Both of us had her as our top pick. Um, Secret Oath's been a filly we've been watching for some time. I think four... Point four to one in the Kentucky Oaks was, uh, uh, despite the tough field, was was awfully good odds on an awfully good filly. Yes, I think so, Brian. And you and I both expected her to run back to those good races uh, that she uh, put together on the Kentucky Kentucky Oaks Trail and off of her performance uh, in the Arkansas Derby. We both expected her to get back to that. We both expected to see that turn of foot. Uh, coming around the turn, getting into position and taking control of the race. And, and and there it was again. And she handled the Oaks field uh, uh, nicely. And, and it was a convincing victory uh, in my eyes and, and one that I liked. And I ended up having the, the Oaks trifecta when a big bomb snuck in for third. So uh, kind of salvaged my weekend. There you go, Matt. Good for you. Yeah, Secret Oath, I thought, was best in this race and a uh, really nice move. She was on the rail and she uh, uh, was taken out by Luis Saez, taken to the outside. And, and then that quick turn of foot, as you mentioned, she uh, 
she took over that race with that move and kind of she was behind Nest actually for a little while uh, during the running of this race. And she she made that decisive move that she has, that quick burst of speed, that turn of foot. And uh, she was best. No one was going to beat her down the stretch. Uh, Echo Zulu was brave after a pretty fast pace in that race as well. Uh, Nest, uh, you know, she had a little bit of a delay there looking for room, but it quickly opened up for her as, the, as they hit the stretch, and she just wasn't quite as good as Secret Oath. Kathleen O might like shorter distances to rally into, or maybe a little bit less class, but uh, Secret Oath was best. I thought with a good ride, she would have won the Arkansas Derby. I know, I know people aren't really saying that, but I thought the ride was bad enough, and hence the jockey change to Luis Saez. I thought the bat, the ride was bad enough that cost her the race in the Arkansas Derby. Otherwise, we might be talking about her on a five race winning streak. And I think she is a real threat here in the Preakness as well. And if she's not the third choice in the Preakness mat, it looks like it's going to be early voting. Early voting, another Chad Brown. Uh, he of course trains Zandon, but early voting very lightly raced, only three lifetime starts. And after breaking his maiden first out, Matt, he won the Withers pretty easily over Unoho. And then uh, last time he was uh, a near winner of the Wood Memorial when Mo Donegal ran him down very late. Yeah, he certainly did. And uh, he looked really good in the Wood Memorial, setting the pace in there, uh, getting beat by Mo Donegal. And Mo Donegal ran a pretty good race uh, uh, in the Derby. And I think really, Brian, you know, remembering from uh, being at the Wood Memorial and, and, and that day and, and, talking to Chad Brownie afterwards. I, I, I think that the, you know, even though he didn't make a decision for a while, I think the plan really from right after the Wood Memorial was to take uh, early voting to the Preakness. Uh, so uh, I think it makes him, that makes early voting even, you know, more interesting contender uh, in the Preakness. I, I, Choosing a little less distance, I think, was wise because I think ultimately, Brian, in both the Oaks and the Derby, aside from the pace things that we've talked about, uh, the other most significant factor for horses was uh, their ability or for a lot of others, their inability to get the distances. Yeah, that's true. And and, and I'll, I'll go one step farther, Matt. Uh, I heard that early voting uh, was probably a Preakness horse and not a Kentucky Derby horse after the withers. So that plan had been talked about for a long time with early voting where maybe this is a horse that we can have. And again, I'll say cloud computing, a lightly raced horse who came out of the Wood Memorial for trainer Chad Brown and won the Preakness uh, several years ago. So what are we looking at here, Matt? We're looking at something far different as we list these, uh, what is it, six, eight, 10, 12 probables or, or at least 10 probables and maybe a couple of possibles here we're not looking at a lot of speed there's not a lot of speed at all on this list very different than what we saw in the kentucky derby uh certainly pace made the race in the kentucky derby as we've said several times already and i, th I think pace could equally make the race in the preakness but in in the exact opposite way epicenter should show more speed this time did the right thing joel rosario laying off just a little bit off that fast pace now it's him and early voting that look like the only true two speed horses in this race. And I think that is uh, something that is going to work against the Kentucky Derby winner this time around. Yeah, it certainly seems that way, Brian. All right, early voting. We talked about Rich Strike. The next two horses are interesting. Uh, the next two horses are those kind of uh, not long shots, but also won't probably won't be single digits on this list either. Uh, creative minister and simplification. Simplification, I want to talk about a little bit too. He he was our uh, a long shot choice in the Kentucky Derby, and he ran a good race. He had a little trouble at the very start, maybe not quite as checked uh, checked as Zandon, but he had traffic the first fifty yards, and it was part of the reason why he was a little farther back than maybe they had anticipated, which I ended which I think ended up being a pretty good thing for the for the for the horse. But uh, there was there was some traffic, and he had to work uh, through traffic, and then an outer, uh, a, a reasonably wide trip, and he was beaten just over three lengths in the end, went fourth. But he's a horse who could show more speed, 
And all of a sudden, maybe that's a good thing. We were looking for simplification from the middle of the pack in the Kentucky Derby. We almost got it. Uh, maybe in the Preakness, he's one of the ones out there close to the lead on sat uh, next Saturday. Yeah, and we've seen simplification mix it up. We've seen simplification get big wins racing on the lead. I don't know if they're going to do that this time, but clearly all the things that you talked about in the trip for simplification added up to the fact that he had to get used maybe a little bit early or earlier in the race to overcome some of the little problems that he had, which meant that ultimately when simplification got to the final 16th of a mile or so, he just didn't have any more punch left to gain ground on what looked like at that point, uh, epicenter in Zandon. Yeah, that's right. That's a good, that's a good point, Matt. Simplification wasn't uh, flying at the end, but he was still running pretty well at the end of the mile and a quarter. Now he drops down into a mile through 16th, and I could see certainly see him sitting third early in the Preakness. Creative Minister, much like early voting, Matt, has only made three career starts, but if you look at each of the three, uh, three different tracks, mind you, uh, didn't debut, uh, of course, until earlier this year. Uh, this is an interesting looking son of creative cause trained by that guy, Kenny McPeak. Again, McPeak has not had luck uh, and he didn't really have a lot of luck in the Kentucky Derby. But another interesting horse from the barn of Kenny McPeak, creative minister coming off two wins. Of course, the most recent was on the Kentucky Derby undercard. Yeah, it certainly hasn't been a great, uh, uh, you know, uh late winter, early spring for McPeak when we're talking about, you know, these uh, these three-year-old uh, three horses. But, yeah, it was a very nice allowance win on the Kentucky Derby undercard, uh, um, you know. And, and interestingly enough, the connections, for whatever reasons, are impressed enough with that victory and what they've seen that they are going to supplement Creative Minister into – the Preakness and be triple crown eligible for a fee of $150,000, Brian. Yeah, that's a good point, Matt. It, it, it makes you take a cause, a, a pause at least to, to take an extra look at this horse. And if you're looking at his form versus early voting, early voting has a lot more speed than creative minister, but three races, if, if you kind of separate the stakes races from just how they performed in these three races, you could certainly make a point that creative minister like early voting is a threat in here. And the fact that they're willing to pony up $150,000 makes you say, Hey, maybe there is something to this creative minister. Uh, a little bit unlucky not to get up in a, in a sprint race at Gulfstream park going seven furlongs, but his wins at Keeneland maiden. And then the allowance at Churchill certainly look good. An up and coming horse who's bred to get the distance. Uh, he is, uh, I, I think one of the big, what are we saying? The big six here, the big seven in the Preakness. And I'm, again, I'm including Zandon after that, the, the next five, I don't know how much interest I have in them, Matt. Um, the one horse, maybe that interests me a little bit is Skippy Longstocking, Safi Joseph trained runner, who's a uh, son of exaggerator because he seems to be getting finally kind of figuring things out. He, he showed some flashes here and there early, but I like his last two races, uh, even though he was certainly only third best in the Wood Memorial. Yeah, third best in the Wood Memorial, but hey, that that was a good field, Brian, That uh, obviously at this point. And uh, I don't know, I think you and I would look a little silly if we were just going to, you know, summarily dismiss these longer shots, particularly after the result in the Kentucky Derby. You, you think, do you, sir? <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb, though. I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be the wise guy here. I'm going to say no one wins the Preakness at 80 to 1, Matt. What do you think? Uh, I'm not going to argue with you, Brian. Lightning strikes uh, once in the, uh, in the Triple Crown series. Pace makes the race, my friend. Looking at the rest, uh, in due time, we haven't heard anything really from in due time lately, but Kelly Breen said he was looking at the Preakness. He expected to run in the Preakness with a not, yet another son of not this time. Uh, he was third last time in the Lexington, kind of down on the inside. Maybe he didn't have free room to run when he was beat by Tawny Port there. Unoho, uh, the Rebel winner, eighth in the Arkansas Derby, though, Matt. 
Yeah, and, and we've talked about that race and the difficulty that the horse with uh, one eye had in there, getting bounced around in tight quarters on the rail. Obviously a very difficult spot for, you know, a, a horse with that physical uh, disability to deal with. Um, and, you know, clearly he wasn't right heading into the derby and, and uh, with that vision issue, dealing with 20 horses certainly is not ideal. Uh, the smaller Preakness field is going to be a much better fit for Uno, Joe. Yeah, much better fit, although the pace might not be a much better fit for Unahoho, who likes to rally, but has run some races where he was a little bit closer to the lead as well, but certainly a, another come from behind her, as is Rattle and Roll. And Matt, I just don't think he's done enough uh, coming off a sixth place finish in the Bluegrass to strongly consider, even though he looked like a very good two year old. And then you have Shake Him Loose, the local horse, done well at Laurel, uh, but he was beaten pretty clearly beaten one third in the Federico Tessio last time at Laurel. Yeah. Third in the Tessio and, and the first two finishers in the Tessio have decided to, uh, to bypass the Preakness. Matt, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to throw this to you now. The, the Preakness preview show here. Um, I, I want your time that we we're calling this the top contenders. So I want your, I want your top contenders right now for the Preakness. This could change. You have time to change before next week, but, Looking at this 12 horse field as we see it now, who are your top contenders in Preakness 147? Yeah, certainly my uh, my top two contenders are uh, are Epicenter and uh, Early Voting. I liked what I saw from Early Voting in the Wood Memorial, and and like you said, uh, um, he's probably the most obvious horse to uh, be out on the lead and and it's not going to be a fast fast race so um uh, and with early voting being you know certainly clearly pointed to the preakness so uh epicenter and early voting are going to be deserving uh, uh closer to the favorites in the field yeah and and maybe you're doing the wise thing here by going right to the horses that are that have the early speed and that that could be the key in the preakness epicenter once again is the horse to beat i recognize that i i wonder how odd, how low his odds will go um it, a lot depends of course if zandon is in the race thinking he might be thinking he might be if they're waiting for that workout and they, they seem to be pretty open to it um secret oath though secret oath is is probably a horse i'm going to end up on she's been a horse that i've really loved this year and um uh, I think she might have the running style. I think that quick turn of foot where she can sit fifth or sixth early and then make a pouncing move if uh, Epicenter and Zandon kind of hook up at some point um, before the far turn. Maybe Secret Oath's punch can get it done. Um, whether she's the third choice or early voting's the third choice here, it, they'll probably both be in a similar neighborhood. I certainly think they're going to bet Chad Brown, and I certainly think they're going to bet the Philly coming out of the Kentucky Oaks. So two two interesting horses. We agree, though. Epicenter is the horse to beat on this list. I wouldn't throw out Creative Minister. I wouldn't throw out Simplification. And I said I had Rich Strike on all my tickets in the Derby. I, I don't see myself betting him this time around, Matt. The odds are going to be far different. And, of course, the pace is going to be far different. On that note, sir, can I get a parting shot from you on our first Preakness preview? Absolutely, Brian. We should, uh, you know, have a better idea but, uh, about what the field will be when we head into uh, next week. Uh, um, certainly, uh, the the stunning Preakness result is, uh, so, excuse me, the stunning Kentucky Derby result uh, 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 lingers, but uh, we're looking at an interesting Preakness, particularly with the Philly in there, and I'm I'm happy to go back to, the, and we've already forgotten the the feel good result with D Wayne Lucas uh, winning the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, absolutely. That was a that was a wonderful win for uh, 86 year old D Wayne Lucas. Secret oath of really really nice filly. He adds interest to the Preakness. Epicenter, the horse that most of us think was the best horse in the Kentucky Derby. Maybe Zandon, who was right there on Epicenter the whole stretch. The 80 to one shot that won the Kentucky Derby, Rich Strike, a few other interesting horses led by, of course, early voting, the one that Matt likes quite a bit. 
I'm with you. I think the Preakness will be an interesting race. Folks, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, do that now for us. We sure do appreciate it. Thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Matt, we'll be back next week after the Preakness draw to really go through this field, give you some more suggested wagers, and talk Preakness. Folks, we'll see you then right here on Horse Center.